Hello and welcome to Top Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be going over setting up an Ethereum wallet so you can start to get invested into the cryptocurrency. Uh, so the very first thing is by setting up a Ethereum wallet what you're going to be able to do is you're going to have an address that'll let you to purchase Ether uh, ETH, uh, which is the token for the Ethereum crypt cryptocurrency. Uh, you can either buy directly into the uh, Ethereum market by purchasing coin, either by using Bitcoin uh, to tr transfer some of that to Ethereum, or you can just use you, you know your normal cash on a trading platform to convert that to Ethereum. An alternative for the, some of those that have a decent GPU is to actually mine that. I'll actually be going over that in a in the next video that I do in this kind of a, a project series with uh, Ethereum. But for today, all I'm going to be doing is setting up uh, the Ethereum wallet, getting an address, and that'll involve kind of synchronizing with the uh, Ethereum network. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have the GitHub page pulled up for the Ethereum wallet that I'll be using uh, for this video. There are three main forms of Ethereum wallets. That is desktop-based, there's web-based, and then there are hardware-based Ethereum wallets. Uh, in short, the web-based seem to have the most flux in how much favor they had within the cryptocurrency communities. Uh, so I was kind of wary to kind of dive deep into the web wallets which is why I chose to start off with a desktop based wallet. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the hardware wallet seemed to be the most secure and the most highly recommended amongst the community. And I'll probably have a separate video down the road kind of diving deeper into the hardware wallets and choosing one and doing some testing to see ease of use as well as uh, just the general uh, setup of a hardware wallet versus a desktop based wallet. However, in this video, I will be setting up a desktop wallet and at least get me started and to kind of getting back into cryptocurrency. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is uh, on the GitHub page, you can just pause and get the GitHub link from there, or I will put that in the description below. If I do somehow forget to do that, uh, go ahead and remind me and call me out and I will make sure I put that in the description. So going to the bottom of the page, you'll see a whole bunch of different installers. Of course, there's a bunch for all the different OSs out there from Linux to Windows to Mac. I'm going to go ahead and click on the installer. I've actually already done this, so I'm just going to go ahead and minimize. Uh, so with Ethereum, uh, I've clicked on the, the wallet link on my desktop. Uh, I installed it, of course. It's a very straightforward installation, so I decided to skip that part. Uh, so one thing with the Ethereum desktop uh, wallet, it does have to synchronize with the blockchain. What that means is it actually has to download all the blocks within the, the blockchain. So you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's a little bit of information on that. And it says download blocks and it tells me how many peers that I have. And it tells me the progress at a moment, 1.3 million of 3.8 million. So I waited a little while after I had kind of started this process to make this video to just kind of illustrate the, the time that it takes to do this. And this will be largely dependent on your internet connection. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind though, is that as you're kind of uh, downloading and synchronizing with this blockchain, is that uh, you will take up a decent amount of storage. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, I believe it's between 10 and 20 uh, gigabytes is how much storage it actually takes up, but I can check that in the, in the future uh, to let you know. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is hit the use domain network. You can go through so much of the setup process while it's kind of synchronizing. I'm gonna go ahead and skip uh, the wallet because I don't already have an existing wallet. If you did, uh, then you'd have to import that uh, at this point in time. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my password that I've already created and uh, go ahead and pro prog progress. So your password is gonna be vital to accessing your account in, in the future. So make sure that is stored in a secure manner, uh, but somewhere you're actually gonna remember it though. Uh, so that's gonna be very vital uh, in the future. Your password is what gives you your kind of personal access to your wallet. So this is just is kind of telling you to make sure you back up your key files and your password, uh, and it tells you where you can uh, get to your, um, your your files to back up. So just keep in mind to always keep a copy of the key store folder where you can't lose it. Uh, I'll probably try to get to that in this video, 
Um, but if not, I'm going to go ahead and get to it uh, in, in, a, in a future video, just focusing just on the backups. It won't take very long at all, you know, 30 second uh, video, but how I like to talk at a IB about a three minute video. <laughs> but uh, stay tuned for that if I don't end up getting to that in this video. So now at this point in time, pretty much all I'm doing is waiting on uh, this wallet to start to synchronize. So you can see that the, I already have a wallet address and I can start to deposit using Bitcoin. Um, but I'm just gonna go, go ahead and wait for this to fully synchronize. You can continue to go next and you can do a couple of different, uh, there's a couple of different pages of, uh, of learning that you can do uh, in the time being. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and I will t start recording again after this is fully synchronized, which will probably be several hours uh, later. So I'll probably do it, go ahead and do that after uh, I get back from work. All right, I'm back and the blockchain has finished uh, syncing. So after that has happened, you'll see uh, the application changed uh, without the progress bar anymore. And it will say launch application. So the application will uh, go back to the purple screen for a second and then it'll fully load the uh, wallet application. All right, so right off the bat, you probably noticed I already have two accounts created inside of my wallet. Uh, the quick reason for this is when I was going through the synchronization process, I had clicked the back button only intending to go back one step and it actually sent me all the way back to the beginning. So as I went through the process again, I had to input a new password and uh, it ended up creating a second account. It did retain both of those accounts. So now I have two accounts. I went ahead and went to the second account and actually clicked here and I just went ahead and renamed it. So some different use cases I could see with multiple accounts is if you wanted one that you held some of your ether that you possibly mined or purchased in that's kind of an investment to see how the ethereum uh, market uh, advances in the future and how it interacts with bitcoin and your local currency uh then you could have a main account that you send money and get, receive money for, or ether uh from you know people across the world and even your friends uh, to create an, another account if you only have one year or uh, made because you didn't do a silly mistake like me uh, adding an account is super simple. You just click the add account button and you input a new password. I would just recommend just for uh, safety's sake, just having a new password for every different account. That's super simple with different uh, password managers out there to easily store these safely. Uh, so just go ahead and create a new password and then you'll have a brand new account ready to start using uh, pretty much right off the bat. Uh, one thing I can't get to right now is the wallet contracts because that requires at least one Ether. Uh, it might be something I get to in the future if I end up buying a, a Ether or end up eventually mining a, enough to actually start interacting with the wallet contracts. Uh, real quick, I want to go over the main account real quick and go over a couple key things. So this big, huge uh, string of characters, that is your account uh, key or your account number. Uh, this will be what you share with people. It is completely fine to give this to people online uh, and share it. And this is how people will send you ether uh, for whatever reason, uh, if you wanted to do uh, digital work for somebody or do edit a video for somebody or something like that, or if you wanted to buy something from somebody, uh, however you wanted to use this or you just you didn't use this to tip somebody or give your, you know, fr pay back your friend for buying dinner. However you want to use this, this is the account uh, password that someone would give you, send either to you uh, so if you bought everybody at the table dinner and tell them just to send some ether your way, this is the key that you'd give them so they could send ether your way. Their next thing down is your ether balance. Uh, mine's zero right now because it's a brand new account. Uh, and there's a couple of quick things at the bottom I wanted to touch on. The copy address is very handy because it just copies to your keyboard your address. Uh, so that's just handy because it is a very long key. You can't just go here and, and control C and control V. So it's not a huge deal. But the thing that I really love here is the QR code. This is great for the mobile world. Uh, you can just you can take a screenshot of this and kind of keep it on your phone to easily give to somebody uh, while you're out on the go. So someone can have your account a key to send you some ether um, while on the go. Uh, once again, I just wanna to touch upon, it is completely fine to give this to people. Even though it is account key, uh, it isn't what actually gives you account access to your account. Uh, that is more dictated by the password. So the password that you create is something you wanna create safe and you wanna make it secure uh, to prevent unauthorized access to your, your account. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the uh, send tab. Uh, if I had a account with any balance in right now, I could choose to send it from one of those accounts. Uh, that it, 
two field is what you would actually enter your someone's uh, Ethereum address to. So I just earlier I copied the address to my main account. I just pasted that there and it wouldn't be able to send anything to it because I don't have any right now. But if I did have money in like the, the one I called the investments account, I could actually send that to my main account if I was so wanted to. Uh, so go ahead and, uh, and going from there, that next field is your amount. Uh, and you can actually specify how much either you want to send to, uh, to somebody. Uh, and, that, and that's pretty much the basics of your accounts. It is actually super simple once you have uh, set it up and synchronized with the blockchain. That does take a little while. I did it while I was at work, but I estimate based on how long it got while I was still here at home in the morning, uh, it, it probably took about a good six to, to seven hours for it to fully sync the blockchain and be ready to utilize. Uh, so if you did find this video uh, informative, uh, please consider subscribing uh, to my channel. Uh, and if you do subscribe or you are an already existing subscriber, uh, consider hitting the little bell icon that'll let you be notified as I release new videos. Uh, so I do have two videos definitely in the pipeline that I have in my head that I want to make sure that I do. Uh, the first of which is going to be backing up and importing uh, your accounts into a wallet. For example, if your uh, computer crashes and you have to restore your accounts uh, because your computer crashed or you just move to a new computer. Uh, also, another video I definitely will be doing will be uh, setting up mining uh, on your personal rig uh, using your GPU. Uh, some people have multiple GPU setups that they're using for mining, but you can do this on pretty much any somewhat modern card. Uh, I get decent um, payback from an RX 380 that's several generations old. I believe there's the RX 580 series out now, or the 5000, 500 series out now, so it's at least two years old, if not more. Uh, so it's not the newest card, but it still does decently well uh, on, on on mining, and I just let it run most of the time because I don't really game too much anymore, as I'm not really using the, uh, the GPU much, and the CPU uh, headway is so small that I don't even notice it, even if I'm doing more intensive tasks, uh, such as video rendering or rendering something in uh, Autodesk Inventor. Uh, so once again, I hope you found this video informative and that you liked it. If you did, make sure you hit the big thumbs up uh, to like this video uh, so that others around there, uh, the world that are looking for Ethereum uh, content might see it on YouTube. Uh, and also, if you do like the content that I'm uh, producing with Optivoken Tech, consider it headed over to my Patreon account, which is in the little banner that's rotating. Actually, it's in the rotation right now. Uh, also, you can find it in the links in the description below and consider being my patron if, if you so choose. Uh, and since this is a Ethereum based video, you can actually utilize the uh, Ethereum key that you saw earlier and send me a small tip if that is your prerogative. Uh, so once again, guys, thanks for watching and until next time, Zach out.